And I'm going to be preaching and teaching today on, Lord, I perceive. Matthew 13 and 10. I really appreciate the Lord bless us be able to take the money we receive from the bus and buy a vehicle six years newer and a lot better for the same money. And we got a church van out there now that holds about 12 people. You could probably put more than that in it, but it's got enough seats to seat about 12 people comfortably. And uh, we're willing to take it wherever's necessary or get somebody else to take it one to try to, you know, get some people to church. So... If anybody to pick you in the area, we're just going to forget about a bus route. We're just going to go where the people's at and not worry about no certain place because we tried it. I know sometimes you try things. If it don't work, you have to try something else. And so we, we tried to have a bus route, and so it just didn't work out. Maybe we will someday. Maybe we get enough of people on a, you know, that you can make a, a route. Amen. But we want people to come. I don't care where they live. Of course, we always want them to do that anyway. But if there's anybody in this picky area that needs a ride to church, well, the only thing I do is call us and we'll do our best to pick them up or see that they picked up. And uh, I want to say these few things before I start preaching. And, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is, writ because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they see and see not. And hear and they hear not. Not a do they understand? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I appreciate, Lord, this word. Lord, these are your words that I've just read. God, I pray that we receive these words into our hearts, Lord, this day. Amen. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be so. We ask it right now. We believe it. In your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let that precious blood flow, Lord, in our veins this day. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Now I want you to turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 2. In Deuteronomy 29 and 2. Amen. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you. And thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And when you came unto this place, 
Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites, and, into, and unto the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant, and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Lord, I thank you for this writing, Lord, in the book of Deuteronomy, that Moses uttered forth thy word to the people of that day. Lord, those were your people, the Israelites. Lord, were your chosen people. God, we are your people in this day and this hour. Because, Lord, this is the day and this is the time of the coming forth and the coming in of the Gentiles. Therefore, the word that you spoke unto the Israelites in the days of Moses, the Lord, through him, God, even so, that word doth come forth in this day and this hour. You're speaking, Lord, on this same wise, God, but it's to a different people. Instead of speaking to the Jews as you were then, or the Israelites, God, you're speaking to the Gentiles, people in this day and this hour. And Lord, we qualify to be called a Gentile. We were speaking, talking to somebody recently in a conversation. Lord, that inwardly, by the blood of Jesus Christ, spiritually speaking, we're Jews. But Lord, outwardly, according to the flesh, and according to that, that Lord, that we're walking around in this temple, this tabernacle. Lord, we're nothing but Gentiles. And God, this is the hour that the dispensation of grace has set in. The word to come forth to the Gentile people, nations of the earth. Regardless of the their race or the color of the creed, God, we are Gentile people. And we're proud, God, that you love us. And the Lord, that you grafted us in, God, to thy will and thy ways. That 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 they inherited, Lord, the promise also has been given unto us. And we also shall come into our inheritance, Lord. Even as they came into their inheritance in that day. And even there's a greater inheritance waiting, Lord, for your people, both Jew and Gentile. But in this hour and this day, God, we thank you, Lord, that we have been counted worthy to be a part of your great plan of salvation. In Jesus' name, God, take control and charge of this service today. I ask it to be so in Jesus' name. Thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Now, the word perceive means, first of all, to be aware of. Amen? To be aware of something, though, to understand it. Hallelujah. To be able to grasp something other mentally with your mind. And without the mind grasping a hold of something other, there will never be any understanding. How many knows that's why I mean you must pray for the mind of Jesus Christ. It's going to take a strong mind in this hour to be able to grasp or understand or to have knowledge of the ways and the things of God. To be aware of that that's taking place in this day and this hour. Hallelujah. Is to be able to perceive what's going on. Amen. But I want a mind to be able to understand a mind to be able to perceive or to know the things of God. To perceive something is to have knowledge of it. To not be in the dark, but to be in the light concerning a subject or a matter. Can you say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. At least that's what the Lord told me, and I believe it to be so. By the Holy Ghost, I believe that this be the definition, hallelujah, of the biblical meaning of the word perceive. Is to have knowledge of what's taking place. To know what's going on. Amen. To be aware of it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Moses stood up on that day in the book of Deuteronomy. And all the Israelites were sitting out there together. And he spoke the word of the Lord unto him. Unto them. Hallelujah. 
And he said, God has brought you to this place and for 40 years. Amen. You wandered around here in this wilderness. But he said, even to this day, he said, but even all the miracles and the signs and the great acts and the happiness of God, he said, even to this day, he said, you still not do not perceive the ways of God. You still do not understand the ways of God. After 40 years of a wandering around here, he said, you still cannot reach out and grasp with your mind and believe that this is the God of all gods. Hallelujah. And he is our creator. In so many words, that's what he was speaking. How many knows that's right? Hallelujah. Can you say man? But this does not have to happen to me and you in this day. How many believes that 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 happened to them was in samples or in examples? Hallelujah. That we should not follow in the error that the error that they followed in. Hallelujah. To not recognize the Lord God of the heavens as being the God of the universe. How many knows it's not necessary and it should never be so that we should go off into the spirit of error as they went off in the spirit of error and begin to go after other gods and worship idols and all these things. How many knows it need not be so? in this day and this hour because there was an example to us that hallelujah that we can follow amen that example not in the way that they went but to know the difference in what was right and what was wrong to know the commandments of God and the doctrines and the teachings and the sayings and the statutes of the almighty God that's the way that you can know how many knows it's the truth hallelujah praise God and for 40 years they didn't understand what was going on they did not perceive the power and the might, hallelujah, that great God that was leading them. Amen. With a pillar of fire by night and, and a pillar of cloud by day. He worked all kind of signs and wonders and miracles for them, yet they could not comprehend the ways of the Almighty God. You know why? Because their eyes and their mind was not upon hallelujah, trying to perceive and know the ways of God. But their mind was upon Egypt. They couldn't get their mind off of Egypt. How many of that's right. Long enough to be able to perceive anything that come from God. He was constantly looking over their shoulder and see that that they left behind. Instead of putting their eyes upon God. Hallelujah. Looking towards the promise that was before them. They was constantly looking behind them. How many knows that's right? Hallelujah. And Moses stood up on that day and Moses was ashamed of them. Moses had been through all kind of trials and upsetnesses, and hallelujah, and had his own brother and sister even halfway turn against him. Who knows that's right? Hallelujah. God's been with you, he said. For 40 years, he said, your clothes is not waxing old. He said, the shoe on, the shoe on your feet, on your foot, he said, it's still good. Hallelujah. But he said, under this day, he said, you, not, you do not perceive the ways of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And these people in this day and this hour right now, they go to church and they go through services, but they don't understand the ways of God. They do not perceive, hallelujah, and have knowledge of the ways of the Almighty. I preached that message here the other night about the spirit of atheism. Hallelujah, people denying that there is a God. I mean, those are some people don't even have the knowledge and the wisdom to know and to acknowledge that there is a God. They cannot perceive that there's a God that reigns in the heavens. Hallelujah. A bunch of skeptics and agnostics. Hallelujah. And infidels is the people that's in this generation when you're living in when it comes to the ways of God. They don't believe that God can operate in His power in the midst of a gathering of people that God can bring forth supernatural miracles and supernatural acts even in the day that we're living here. We've got the agnostics. We've got the atheists in the country today. We've got the infidels in the country today. We've got the skeptics in the land today. And they know this is the truth. Hallelujah. That God said you could perceive His ways. He said there's a way that you can understand the ways of God. Hallelujah. I'll tell you one thing. You will have to search Job asked the question. He said, Canst thou by searching it find out God? I tell you, I'm going to do everything I can. I might not know all the ways of God. And I might not know His complete will. But we've got to find it for ourselves as an individual. How many knows this right? 
I might not be able to stand up here and prophesy over every individual and tell you where you're going to spend eternity at. I might not be able to stand up here and prophesy and tell you what's going to happen to you tomorrow or what's going to happen to you next week. But I can stand up here and prophesy you unto you that if you will follow the ways of God, if you will turn away from your thoughts and your ideas and your ways, if you will forfeit your will and begin to pray and seek for the will of God, that God will give you a tomorrow, amen, that will cause you to rejoice and be happy that God will bring you into eternal life. If you perceive that that is spoken unto you by the Holy Ghost, then God will bring you into life eternal. I mean, that's right. I can show you and teach you the ways that will bring you, hallelujah, into eternal life. But I cannot tell you where you're going to spend eternity because that's up to you as an individual. Brother, the Bible still teaches that every man must work out his own salvation in fear and must trim it. If I had my way and my will, I would to God, I will to God. Amen. And every one of us is going to make it into God's kingdom. I mean, those that do, that is the desire of every Christian. Amen. That others might make it. Amen. Into God's kingdom. But nobody has a guarantee who he is and who ain't. The only thing that's going to bring me you eternal life is the blood of Jesus Christ. Apply to mind your heart, mind your life. And I tell you one thing, the blood's not going to be there when sin comes in. I mean, those the Spirit of God will depart from you. Hallelujah. When sin and transgression begins to take hold of your life, I want you to know, hallelujah, that the Spirit of God will take his flight. Oh, yes, it will. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. So this is a mental thing. Amen. We've been accused of not having much sense. We've been accused of being beside ourselves. Well, it has got something to do with the mind. It's according to the way you receive it. It's according to the way that you grasp it. How many of us is the truth? Hallelujah. I tell you one thing. I know just and I, I know just enough about this word to, to cause me to want to know more about it. I'm just crazy enough about Jesus to want to become more crazy about Him. Hallelujah. Somebody said you're insane. I tell you one thing. If I'm insane, it's showing in the natural. Amen. It's by the Spirit of God. I said it's by the Holy Ghost. I want to get caught up in it. I want to be addicted to the Word of God. Hallelujah to God. I want to be possessed. David said God possessed me in His reins. I want God to possess my very being. I want the Lord to be my Lord and my Master. I want the Almighty God. God to be my God. How many wants to give your ways and your will over to Him and let Him be the ruler of your life? Amen. It's my will for God. Amen. To rule my life. Hallelujah. I really want Him to. I want the Lord to tell me what to do. Somebody said, bless God, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Well, I'm praying this, that God will tell me what to do. I'm praying that God will speak through somebody to encourage me, to help me. And I'm not particular who it is. It'd make me feel good if God were to move on somebody out in this congregation right now. And the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of Prophecy move upon you. And you'll stand up and prophesy, Yea, the Lord loves you, Brother McCoy. Yea, the Lord's going to bless you, Brother McCoy. It would make me feel good to hear it again. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That God wants to use you for His glory. How's God going to use me and you for His glory if we do things our way? Amen. It's going to be mine and your glory if we do it our way. Amen. But if we go God's way, it'll be His glory. Amen. Jesus had the revelation of this. He knew this when He prayed the prayer, not my will, but thine be done. He knew that this is the only way that the Almighty God of the heavens could receive the glory. Hallelujah. The miracles and signs that He performed was to give the glory to the Father which is in heaven. How many knows there's a truth? That's how come Jesus got down on His knees when He, hey man, when he stood over when He stood over the grave of Lazarus and He humbled Himself there. Hallelujah. Before the Almighty God. He said, God, for Your glory is this brought about. He said, it's not for my glory. I ain't worried about people recognizing me and receiving me as any thing. He said, Lazarus has died. He's been put in this tomb that the glory of God may be manifested. I mean, those that's right. And I want you to know one thing that people glorified God when Lazarus rose from the dead. Didn't they glorify him? Oh, yes, they did. I said, yes, they did. And I want him to take mine your life over. How many of you, how many wish you to take your life over? Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, God, give me the mind. To perceive the ways of God. To be able to understand, to be aware of that that is happening in this hour and in this day. That I might be saved. Not only do we pray the prayer that 
we might have the, will, the, the, the knowledge and the wisdom to be saved or sad, but we must pray that God will give us the knowledge and the wisdom and the perception, hallelujah, that we might be able to, to spread the word of God and get other people saved. When then you become aware of God's will and God's way, then, then you must go out trying to tell somebody else about it. This ain't something that you keep for yourself. Who knows this is something that you keep on giving away. You distribute the word of God. The Bible spoke in one place about they distributed the word of God. The word of God needs to be distributed like seed upon the field. How many knows that's right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm going to say, God help me to perceive. God, let my, my thinking be strong enough. God, give me the mental capacity, hallelujah, to have knowledge and to be aware of your ways and to know thy will and the certain in my life. Praise God. This is the word of God to the church today. I said this is to the church. God's given us a word behind that word the other night, behind that prophecy. God's given us a word. And God told me today, this very day, and it might not sound like so, but the Scripture will back it up, that one of the most difficult things to do is to perceive the ways of God and the will of God. You think it'd be easy to understand the ways of God. Well, you walk around here all the time saying, I don't understand. It doesn't matter how close when you get to God, things continue, continually is happening in your life that we cannot perceive it. We cannot, we are not aware of the ways of God. God does things and God speaks things to me and you. And we shake our heads and we wonder, God, how can it be so? God, can it, how can it possibly be so? Hallelujah. That you're going to bring forth this Savior. Hallelujah. But if we can pray that part, God help me to perceive your ways and to know your will and however hard or however rough it might be. God help me to receive that. Hallelujah for my life. I want you to know then God, he'll help you through the matter. I said, he'll bring it through it. Won't he do it? Oh, yes, he will. Lord Jesus, help us all. If we had mine, if we had our way and our will, there's probably the, most of us have been somewhere else. We'd probably be somewhere else if we was going according to what we'd like. I've said it before, and, and I'm not embarrassed and ashamed to say it. If I had chosen a place to live, I took a western state. Or either I took the mountains because I love the mountains and I love the west. Hallelujah. I lived in the mountains about 16 years of my life and lived in the West for seven more years. And I love them. Out of 42 years, I spent uh, about, I know, 23 years straight time from the time I was a little boy. For 23 years, I lived, I lived either in the mountains or in the western part, hallelujah, of this country. And I loved it. How many understands when you love something, you love it? Hallelujah. But I had to understand the ways of God one day when God told me, amen, in 1976 to come to New Orleans through the prophet of God when he prophesied, this is God's will for your life to do thus and thus. And I perceived that this was a word, amen, that was come from God through a mouth of one of his messengers. And I said, yes, God. Hallelujah. And I ended up, amen, in uptown, downtown, in uptown New Orleans. Oh, yes. I did. But if I had chosen it, if it had been my will, I said, God, send me to Oklahoma. I said, God, send me to Texas. God, send me to Arizona. Send me to Colorado, Utah, Nevada, or Wyoming. Amen. I said, Amen. Or send me back up in the mountains. Hallelujah. Them great smoky mountains. I love them smoky mountains. I said, God, send me back to the sand mountain, to the smoky mountains, back to the channeling mountains. God, let me go back into the mountains. Hallelujah. But when I understood and I had knowledge and I became aware, Amen, of God's will for my life, they were the one thing for me and you to do. And God lets us know is to say, Yes, God. God, where will you want me to go? And what do you want me to do? Regardless of the circumstances of the environment or the surroundings, God, I'm going to say yes to you. How many wants to say yes to him? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you can perceive and understand and know the ways of God. But since I'm here, I'm proud I'm here. I like it here now. But I didn't like it when I come, but I like it now. Home is where you make it. How many knows you can have a home anywhere? Hallelujah. And every house is not a home. I said every house is not a home. If you if you get where in God that you need to be, including me and you and all of us, if we come to the place in God we need to be, we can rejoice a half a mile to hell. Brother Terrell, I've heard him say more times than one. He said, God, if you send me in a half a mile of hell, he said, I'll still
still have revival. I'll go down there and preach. They sent him out there. God sent him to India to the dung hills. And he went out to the dump and the, the junk piles and the dung hills where the poorest of people lived, he said, in India. And there he had a revival. Man wouldn't even go to that place at all. But God spoke to him and told him to go. And he said, yes. Hallelujah. Some of these other preachers, amen, that God spoke to him. Like Brother Jones, God told him to go back in the mountains of Haiti and ride a donkey back in the mountains that couldn't even carry a vehicle back out. And he said yes to God. You know why? Because he perceived, he understood that this was God's will for his life. And he was the man for that job. And he knows it's the truth. God's got a man for every job he's got. And God knew that I was a man for this job right here. God knew that I had what it took to be able to wrestle with every demon, every power, and a force out of hell in this part of the country. God knew I'd see this thing through to the end. That's how come I'm here. But I had to, I had to take knowledge and be aware and understand that this was God's will in my life. And once that I knew without a shadow of doubt that this was God's will, God began to prosper me. And God began to bless me. Hallelujah. He'll do the same thing for you too. How many knows He'll do the same thing for you? Lord, I perceive that I'm in your will. Understand that I'm in your will. And I'm proud to be in your will. How many is proud to be in God's will? Hey, some of you could be sitting in the biggest church in town, but you get out of God's will. You could go out there and be identified with people that's easier to be identified than us. Anybody in town, a man would uh, get a sweeter word as far as old natural is concerned about being identified with them, being able to know the crowd besides this place. How many knows that's right? Hallelujah. I said, glory to God. You could go down here to one of these first churches and do anything you wanted to do. Amen. And mingle in with the majority and be popular in this town. How many knows that's right? Or you can choose, amen, as David and Moses chose to suffer the affliction of the people of God. You can choose this way. And when you choose this way, I want you to know, amen, that this will become God's will for your life. Because these are the ways of God. Can you say glory? Thank you, Jesus. And God's working it all out. God's are working it every bit out. How many knows He is? God will always let things happen to you sometimes and then tell you things later on and you don't understand what's taking place. But after a while, it'll all work out. Hallelujah. I said it'll work out for you. Thank you, Jesus. Our Baptist preacher used to say when I was in the Baptist church, he said, folks will go all the way around the cross when they can come straight to it. And it's the truth. People send uh, their finances and their tithes and their offers and monies off and, and they just jump up and down to get a letter through mail from some far off preacher. And the preacher right there in their back door sometime or right down the road has got just as much of God and most times more than that when they send through mail again. How many believe that's right? People trying to buy a blessing from God. That's right, people trying to buy God's blessing. You can't buy this thing with money. How many of those that can't be bought with money? Well, the same thing you've got to do is perceive what God's will is for me and you. Amen. If God has me, you sitting down here in the midst of a handful of people, as long as it's God's will, you sit. Amen. That handful of people, and you hold your head up. And don't you be ashamed. I tell you one thing, we ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. How many believe when you've got the gospel of Jesus Christ? We've got the word of God. If anybody ought to be ashamed, it ought to be those that's casting mind your name out for evil. It certainly cannot be the children of God. Amen. I'm not ashamed, not at all afraid, but I'm standing up upon this cross. I'm standing upon the word of God. Amen. I've took up the blood stained banner of Jesus Christ. And I'm waving it high. I'm in mean, evil's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, you look a lot better coming out of a big cathedral. People snapping your picture. To have you a photo, to have a photo album at the house and show people where you went to church, and there you are, hey man, stand before some great cathedral somewhere or another. This is my church, hallelujah, hey amen, and make you look big as far as the natural is concerned, as far as the flash is concerned. How many knows that's right? 
Hallelujah. But when you be willing to stand behind them double doors back yonder, when you be able to stand among a mixed congregation of white people and black people and say, these are my brothers and these are my sisters and this is my church over here in South Arizona. I want you to take some of the stand. And he knows that's right. And you say, praise God. I said, say, praise God. But if we're going to perceive the ways of God and know that God's got to have a handful of people somewhere that's got some boldness and some courage, hallelujah, stand regardless of the situation or the circumstances. Hallelujah. It takes something to do it, don't it? Brother Gable could be playing an uh, organ at one of the biggest churches in New Orleans. Sure he could do it. He, he's a good enough organist. He could play at the, most any church. And they'd be glad for him to come. Hallelujah. That's right. That's the way I feel about it. Exactly how I feel. If he couldn't play, uh, if he couldn't play, I'll fly away on the organ. I still want him here. I said I still want him here. Amen. Well, he's had all kind of invitations and invites to go to other places and become an organist and everything else. One man offered him a place to live, and I forgot how much money. Something about you know what he's going to just set him up real good, and he wouldn't go. You know why? Because he perceived, he took knowledge, and he was aware of the fact that God had sent him here to work in this place, to be, hallelujah, to be steadfast and unmovable. Somebody said, well, he's crazy for doing it. Well, you might say it's crazy. He's got a college education, and amen, but he's carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he ain't got no salary coming in, and amen, but I'll tell you, his reward is not during this life, but his reward is after a while, and besides that, God's going to bless him here for us over with. God's going to bless those that stood for his word in this hour. How I many those are true? Oh yes it is. And one of the most difficult things to do as I said is to perceive the ways of God and his will. And it can only be accomplished by and through an open heart. You've got to open your heart to God. you can got to say Lord here am I. God I was there praying to the person Lord here am I. He said send me. Take me Lord and use me for your glory to help build up your kingdom. Jesus said, it's not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. God, whatever you want, that's what I want. God told me when we begin to desire the things that he desired, that the time would come, and even so now, to those that sold out to God, that mind your adversaries becomes his adversaries. And God's adversaries, mind your adversaries, and God's going to stand up and fight the battle for us. I tell you one thing, if your adversaries is adversaries of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't got a thing in the world to worry about if your enemies is the enemies of God and His adversaries. Because God's going to fight, mind your battles for us. God's going to see in you through. How many knows He is? Oh, yes. But He said you've got to have an open heart. Amen. It takes a Holy Ghost to understand. I'm going to turn back to this scripture because the Lord told me to remind the people of this. St. Matthew 13 and 12. Let's turn back and read that. And you will have to agree with me that it takes a Holy Ghost to receive even this very scripture that Jesus spoke. You can't receive this without the Holy Ghost. Matthew 13 and 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So I said, God, why don't you want to do this? I ain't hardly got nothing at all. Now you want to take away what I got. And the one that one that's got it said, you keep giving more. You know where the difference comes in? It's the difference between the individuals and the heart that's within the individual. That's where the difference comes in. It's God's will for every one of us to prosper. How many of us it's God's will for every one of us uh, to have more, even in this life? If we don't, if, if we don't consume it upon our own lusts and we don't begin to worship the things and praise the things that uh, hallelujah that mortal man has created. And that's when it becomes a sin. Hallelujah. But God will add blessing to your blessing. How many believe He will? Amen. If you have a heart to perceive, amen, the will and the word of God, and you understand the ways of God. Jesus said to him, to him that hath it shall be given even more unto him, and he shall have abundance. Somebody said he don't need anything else. Well, you take that up with God. God said it through Jesus. Jesus is what he said to him that hath, even so it shall be given even to him, even more. Even 
given into abundance and he that hath not even it shall be taken away from him even that that he hath but you can walk around here and you can be you can be chief of the paupers and you can begin to pray and seek for the ways of God and ask God to help you to perceive and understand his ways and God will bring you from a dunghill to a king's palace how many believes he'll do it oh yes he will but you got to give God the credit and the knowledge to acknowledge him in all things and if you'll do that you'll be blessed and God will add to your treasures and God will add to your abundance God loves his people so much there's going to be a resurrection one of these days and the graves is going to be full of jewels <laughs> and the castle is going to be filled up with jewels God spoke about Malachi when he made up his jewels. How does it come forth the resurrection one day? We're going to be jewels in the sight of God. Hallelujah. You think that God's going to come back after a bunch of dead men's bones? God's going to make up his jewels. We're going to shine in God's kingdom. We're going to be something else that God is going to, amen, get glory out of. How many knows when he makes up his, up his jewels in that day? When God resurrects his old bones from the ground, God's going to make up his jewels as he is. When I say praise God, God's blessings upon me and you so much, me and you are so rich. Even at the resurrection, we're going to be priceless jewels in the sight of the Lord. I tell you one thing, men, you're worth something other. How many knows that God's children is worth something other? Yes, we are. Every soul is priceless. They ain't got enough of money in Chase Manhattan to buy what you're worth. They ain't got enough of gold at Fort Knox to purchase what you're worth. That's right, we're priceless souls. Amen. Jesus died for all of me and you together, yet he died for me and you as an individual. If it hadn't been nobody there when, he, when the day come to, for him to be crucified except Harvest Time Revival Church, 2,000 years in the future, if it hadn't been nobody there but us, he'd have still went to the cross. He would. He would have shed his blood just the same because every soul is priceless in the sight of the Almighty God. I'm worth something other. Somebody say, he really thinks he's something. I am something. Amen. I acknowledge that I am something other. Well, you think I'm going to walk around here and say there ain't nothing to me when the Bible says that God's people are special people? God told me himself that mean you're special people. How many believes he did? You better believe I'm something special. Somebody said he thinks he's something special. No, I don't. I know I am. I said I know I am. Who knows you something special in the sight of the Lord? I might not ever attain the fame and fortune as far as the natural is concerned. And everybody in town might not know my name and call it a hallelujah. Amen in an old worthy manner. But I tell you one thing. My name is written down in the King's Book of Life. How many knows it? Mind your name has been written down in the King's Book. Amen. He's keeping, con he's keeping contact with me and you. And he loves us. And God's going to give to those that has, and to those that have not, he's going to take it away. But it's not no natural thing, it's a spiritual thing. If you ain't got none of God, don't expect to get no more if you ain't reaching out for more. I don't care how much I get. I'm sort of like a Solomon now, I'm reaching out for more. And not just old natural things. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm preaching a message, a spiritual message. A message about the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. A message about the ways and the things of God. To perceive His ideas and His thoughts and His knowledge and to know of Him and His wisdom. That's what I mean. you've got to search for, saints. How many believe this is the truth? Hallelujah. And you'll have to agree that that scripture that I just read, it takes the Holy Ghost for you to understand it. I can remember before I became a Christian, I thought, Lord, why would you do that? I thought, God, here we're living in an old house up here in the backside of nowhere. Amen. When you're to freeze to death, then we ain't got nothing. You're talking about taking away what we got. I thought, God, if you take away this, and I wasn't even a Christian, but I'd read the Bible. I said, why does he want to take it away from me? I ain't got hardly a decent place to stay now. You see, I was looking at it in the natural. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Sit out there and act like it. You too wise in the, the natural understand. Amen. I want you to know the wisdom of man's coming to naught. It's going to take the wisdom of God for me and you to make it. How many believe this is the truth? Hallelujah. And you know yourself, there's been times that you've read that Bible and you've seen the natural part of it rather than the spiritual. You wonder why. God, why would you do something like that? I just don't understand you, Lord. 
I don't understand why you'd do that. I thought, Lord, we, we hardly got enough to eat now. We're almost suffering from malnutrition. You talking about taking away the last pound of cornbread we got? Amen. About to freeze death now. What are you going to do? Come in here and get her lighter? You're going to take the cannon out of her house? Amen to God? Because I was seeing it the natural. I was just a, a young boy, but you know, I didn't know it, spiritually speaking. I could not perceive it by the Spirit of God. Amen. It was just darkness to me. I mean, it, it was, as they say, it was Greek to me. I didn't know it really was Greek. <laughs> it was Greek to me. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, help us to perceive your mistress. I want to perceive his mistress and know the ways of God. Don't you? Praise God. Somebody said, I can understand the ways of God. We're going to understand them by the Spirit, saints. You might not have, you might not be filled with overflow of the Holy Ghost, but if it's in, if you sanctified yourself and you're reaching out to, to be filled with His Spirit and to know of His ways and His wills or His will, God will lead you into an understanding. How many knows that's right? But because before that I could be converted, I perceived that that preacher, that skinny preacher, I, I, I looked up from that congregation. I saw that. Long, laggy, long arm, bony fingered, skinny preacher. Amen. And I thought he's something other that's different from other folks around here. And I perceived, I understood, and I was aware of the fact that this was really one of God's messengers. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And when I perceived that this man had been in con contact with God, that this man actually prayed and, and was able to touch God. Hallelujah. I perceived it. I, I was aware of it. I took knowledge of the fact, amen, that he had been with Jesus. They had to take knowledge of the disciples. They had to perceive. They had to understand with their own mental capacity and way of thinking. They had to understand in their own mind that these men had been with Jesus. How many knows that men, when they received and believed that the, the, the apostles had been with Jesus, they began to receive the words. How many knows that's right? Before that you can ever believe, you've got to perceive. And then you start believing. I began to believe. I said... When I perceived that he was a man of God, I began to believe what he was saying. I thought, I've read that in the Bible before, but I never understood it. But this man is bringing it out. I, I'm understanding what this man's saying. I sat back there and all these things was running through my mind. I began to believe what he said. And when I began to believe, something other got a hold of me and started shaking me. Something other began to move up and down inside of this old, this old boy's heart. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about when you come under conviction. You know what brought you under conviction? First of all, you perceive that the word that you heard was the word of God. And you begin to believe that this was God's word. Hallelujah. And it begin to soften that old hard heart up of yours. And my God, something got a hold of you. I thought, I want what this man is talking about. I thought, I, my God, I understand what he's talking about. I believe what he's talking about. And somebody moved up on me and said, well now, if you understand, perceive what he's saying, and you you believe what he's saying? So why don't you receive what he's saying? I said, God, I'm going to receive what this man says. And that's what it's all about. It's to perceive and to believe and to receive. And he said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And he made a new person out of me. God made a brand new person out of me. And he done the same thing for you. But as long as I sit out there, as I say so many times, like a person with their heel in the dirt. That's God, you ain't going to tell me nothing, preacher man. I know more than you ever thought about knowing and I'm not going to live according to anything you say. And as long as I thought I was the tallest Texan in Alabama, I couldn't get nowhere with God. When I realized that there was a power that was taller and higher up than I was. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I wasn't ashamed to get down with my cowboy boots on. Hallelujah, my western clothes on that day. I thought I was the big, tough, tall Texan that doesn't come back into Alabama. But I tell you one thing, time out there, the lanky preacher got through with me and that word that he preached, I felt like I was about a half inch tall. I thought, my gracious, there ain't nothing to me at all. And I've seen myself in the eyes of God. I perceive what he said. I believe what he said. And then I received it to be so. And Jesus Christ came into my heart. And he ain't never left out. He still lives on the inside of me. And he say, glory. Praise God. 
And that's all. That's what it's all about right now. If we could get the people to do these three things, that's it. They'd make it. They would be in God's kingdom if they would perceive, believe, and receive. That's it. Is that not the truth? How many knows this is the truth? It's not complicated. It's simple. The Word of God is easy to be understood if you want to understand it. But you ain't going to understand it unless you give your heart. It's difficult. It's hard to understand the will and ways of God with a stubborn will. You've got to, you've got to get rid of your stubborn will. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. See, as long as you walk around here in an old fleshly, carnal, natural realm, amen, we are not going to receive the things that's of God. We're not going to receive and discern the things that come from God. We're not going to be able to perceive God's will for our life. But when we come out here and we open our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, whatever it is that I can learn, I want to learn it. I want to understand your ways and to be aware of your will. Hallelujah. You know what happens? Right in the midst of a congregation of people, that old natural begins to peel off of you. I said that old natural man, that old natural way of thinking, amen, it begins to depart from you even in the midst. You know, that's what conviction does. Conviction calls a natural man to change from being a natural man. It'll change him into a, a creature, amen, that's being spiritual. How I many of that's right? And once God can get in your mind to begin to think spiritual, I want you to know you'll put off that old natural man. And the ways of the flesh, you'll walk out and, and leave them behind and make your way to an altar prayer, amen, when your mind become spiritual. How many knows that's right? You're going to have to begin to receive Christ in your mind before you'll ever take Him into your heart. Somebody said, my heart's just going to reach out and get Jesus. Not Your mind ain't reaching out for it. Amen? Don't you know that what you think as a man thinketh in it, as a man what? As a man thinketh in his heart. So he is. Thinketh in his heart. How are you going to think in your heart? Your heart can't think. Except through your mind. This is your thinking capacity up here. This is how many knows this? This is this the, the, the mind. Hallelujah. This is that that sends the message to the heart. How many knows the mind? Hallelujah is going to send a message to the heart. And your heart will flip over and say, Yes, man. Yes, I will, God. I'm going to do it, Lord. Amen. And when you begin to think in your mind, hallelujah, then you'll be able to receive it in your heart. How are you going to perceive the ways of God except by the knowledge and the wisdom of your mind. That's why he said, if I can just get this mind in you, which is in Christ Jesus, I'll make something worthwhile out of you. He said, if you'll just let this mind be in you, if you'll start, if you'll start thinking spiritual instead of naturally, he said, well then, I can make something out of you. How many knows that's right? Praise God. Hallelujah. And then when I began to perceive that that was the Word of God that that preacher was preaching. I perceived that he was a, a man sent from God, that he was doing God's will and doing what he was doing. And I began to believe it. My mind started clicking. Hey man, that sounds good. I like what I'm hearing. You know, I, I, that sounds good. I ain't never heard anything quite like this before. You know what I think I'll do? My goodness, I believe what this man said. I felt something that was just shaking me on the inside. You know what? That message was fed from my mind right straight to my heart. When I began to believe, that message came straight from my mind and came into my heart. Hallelujah. And once it touched that heart, my Lord, there's something that began to bubble up in my heart. And I began to feel the presence of God. And I said, I believe what this man said. Hey Amen. I said, I know what I'm going to do. And my mind said, I'm going to receive. And my heart just opened up wide. I said, my heart just opened up wide. Hallelujah. And I received this Jesus on the inside of me. Praise God. Don't you appreciate Him? I forgot about it. This is a different microphone. Hallelujah. And Ecclesiastes 2 and 14. Ecclesiastes 2 and 14. Praise God. Now 
The Lord's given us a lesson today, ain't it? A lesson in righteousness. Thank God. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Hmm. But the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happeneth to them all. God ain't no respect to person. He said if it happens to one, it happens to the other. One event happened to all. God ain't made me any no special character. Above our, the only way that you can be anointed above your fellows, uh, amen, is to acknowledge righteousness and abstain from evil and wickedness. Ain't that right? God said you can be anointed above your fellows. The only way you can be anointed above your fellows is because you, because you perceive, believe, and receive more than they do. If they perceive and believe and receive like you do, how many knows you'll have the same understanding? But there's many members in the body, but there, I mean, there's only one body, but there's many members. How many knows that's right? And God's called some, that, amen, to be apostles, and some to be called prophets, and some to be called pastors, and some to be called evangelists, and some to be called teachers. How many knows that's the truth? Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And some offices are above other offices. But God's got every one of them placed in the ministry according to His will. And if everybody will operate according to the will of God for their life, you'll be just as important and be worth just as much as that big member. Every little member is going to be worth just as much as the big member or the greater member. Amen. Amen. And you'll be able to save souls and witness to people. Hallelujah. Just like those that's way above you. Amen. Amen. You operate... You testify, you witness according to that that God's given you, according to your ability. And me, you'll stay within our ability, but not be satisfied with just the ability that we have now, but believe that God's going to give us a greater ability. I believe that I'm going to be able to declare the Word of God in a greater uh, uh, anointing. What am I going to declare it in now? That I'm going to be able to speak the Word of God. Uh, amen. What people can understand what I'm saying better than what they can now. I'm not satisfied with where I am now. But I'm reaching out to God. I'm reaching out to perceive and to be aware of greater things uh, that come from God. Uh, and I know that we shall receive them. Uh, amen. If we will believe it to be so. Amen. God won't say, I want you to grow in God. There's not a soul in this building today that the Lord don't want you to grow some more. Oh, yes, He does. To reach out more. God, help me to perceive and understand and know and to be aware more of your way in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you look at us on Dry Street and you look at us on Louisiana Avenue and you look at us here. And it's like daylight and dark. You get some of these old tapes, and even though I've been preaching for years, when I was on, uh, I've been preaching for 10 years when I come to New Orleans. I've done been preaching for 10 years. But you take one of those messages 10 years ago, or not, or 1976, how many years ago is that? Uh, six years ago. I've been preaching for 10 years then, and that's been six years ago. Amen? But you take a message that I preached six years ago, and compare it to the way I preach and minister now, you can tell the difference. You can tell that God has helped me to grow in Him. Amen. God will bless you talents and everything as you as you put them to work. How many God will bless you? You wouldn't believe if you heard Brother Gable in 1976 on Oregon and heard him now. You wouldn't believe that he was the same man. Hallelujah. You wouldn't believe that Sister Wright was the same, the same songstress. Hallelujah. She was in 1976. Hallelujah. I said praise God. She come down there and she sound like a hen scratching. And she admitted, she said, me be a singer? <laughs> she almost laughed in my face. She said, that's absurd. I never heard nothing like this. She, the whole time she said, Brother Carl, I want to do something for God. I want to do something for God. Whatever God wants me to do, that's what I want to do, see. Amen. She was out to perceive the ways of God and the, wills of, the will of God for her life. That's what she wanted. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me in the parking lot about 77, I guess it was, about five years ago. I think it was 77. We was getting ready to, to come home or go, they was going home, and I don't know where I was going because I think it was in a uh, morning service, a Sunday service, and I think it was in the afternoon, I believe that's what it was. When I told you, I turned the parking lot. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost quickened me. I said, the Holy Ghost quickened me. And said, tell her that I'm going to make a singer out of her. Hallelujah. And she'll be able to stand before a congregation of people. And the people 
shall be blessed. And he said, Tell us to be faithful, it shall come to pass that the day shall come that she shall stand before a multitude of people and sing the praise of the God. And I said, Glory to God. She said, Me sing? She said, I ain't no singer, but God can make something out of it. Hallelujah. So I said, Praise God. Amen to God. She might not have made it to Hollywood yet. She might not be on the grand old operator. Amen to God. And she might not be, she might not replace uh, Sister Mahalia Jackson. But she's on her way. I said, but she's on her way. Come on, say amen. Praise God. Just like me, I hadn't replaced Dr. Graham yet, but I'm on my way. Amen to God. You ought to see Sid McCroy and mine's uh, anniversary photographs. We got our uh, photographs back, our pictures back. Amen. We went down and, and got one of our specials they run, you know. Amen. Got them about half price. <laughs> got some great big old 11 or 14 and some a couple 8 by 10s. We had to give 8 by 10s to our children, I think. Got that big old 11 or 14. And there I'm sitting up there beside that beautiful woman looking so handsome. Hallelujah. I told somebody, I showed them pictures, I said, look who I look like. <laughs> Amen. So look who I look like. I said, Billy Graham. Hey Amen. I did. I said, I look like Billy Graham. People told me years ago, so you know who you look like? I said, Jimmy Dean and Billy Graham. I said, yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody, people tell me that. They tell me that I look like Brother Terrell. I guess maybe sometime I do, but I don't know. But maybe just wear acts on I don't know. Hey Amen. I'm not trying to look like nobody. I can't have it. I didn't make this face. God made this face. And if I favor you, don't get mad at me because I look like you. Take it up with the Lord. Hallelujah. After a while, we all going to favor. I don't care what color you are, where you come from. Everyone else is going to look alike before this thing's over. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody going to think we're kin folks before this thing's over with. Somebody say, praise God. You already start favoring her. I can see the favor already in you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, bless him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. It's the truth. It's right. And I went down. I was down in New Orleans yesterday for a while. And went down there. This big high class dude was talking to me, clicking them heels. You know, boy, he was uptight. I mean, he was ready to go. I'm talking about he was cool as cool could be. He was proud of himself. And he, he was talking to me. He got in a conversation. I told him I was a preacher. He said, Well, I said, I don't guess you are, but says, anybody ever told you? He said, You look just like Billy Graham. I said, Yeah, I said, they have. I said, That's a compliment. I appreciate that. I said, well, I ain't quite where he's at yet. I said, you know, I ain't quite got where he's at yet. Amen. Amen. I said, it's probably going to take me a while to get where he's at. But it was a compliment. I believe that's okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm proud, most of all, to be like Jesus. How many wants to be like Jesus? Amen. I, I take it as a great compliment when people tell me I favor, you know, people that's, uh, you know, renowned people. People that's well known. Here I am, a, you know. I ain't claiming to be no some big something other than if they say I favor somebody like that. It makes you feel good sometimes. Ain't that right? Well, if they can't see me, at least they can see somebody else in me or something out there. Maybe something will come out someday. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's move on here. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate you saying I like Dr. Graham. Amen. And so to understand God is to perceive God's anointing. Did you know that? Did you know to understand God is to perceive His anointed? That to begin to understand God, I had to believe that that man that stood behind that pulpit, I had to perceive and take knowledge of Him and be aware of the fact that He had been with God. Because I was a sinner, I was lost. The Bible said it's through the foolishness of preaching that men are saved. How many believe that's right? Hallelujah. How are you going to receive a man's word if you don't even believe, if you can't perceive and understand technology and be uh, aware of the fact that he's been with God? How are you going to believe him? You can't believe him. But yet the Bible said it's through the foolishness of preaching that men are saved. So we have to take knowledge, uh, amen, have to perceive that that vessel that's preaching to us is of God. If we're going to believe his words, we've got to perceive or take knowledge of the fact that he has really got God's word in him. And the Bible backs it up. Did you know that? So to understand God is to perceive God's anointed. We must know those that's ordained of Him. Don't go right here. Well, I think He's a man of God. I believe I, I believe He is, but I'm not quite sure. That, that ain't nothing. You ain't doodly squat when you say that. I've heard people say that about great men of God. 
Well, men, you should never be in question of who's got God and who hasn't got God. It don't reflect on that person. You know who it reflects on? We walk around here, amen, somebody's filled up with the Holy Ghost and anointed power of God working signs and wonders and miracles. And me and you walk out here and say, well, I think he might be a man of God. You know who it reflects on? You. That's who it reflects on. It ain't no reflection on that person that's really ordained of God. That person that's really guided from God. It don't do anything to hurt them. Not really. Oh, it might, it might hinder for a while, but, but God's going to give us power over all hindrances. Ain't that right? Because God's put something in the hearts of His, His messengers that they can overcome things like that. Amen. Amen. Somebody recently said a bad word to me and, and it just pack of lies. I mean, you know, just, just nothing but lies. Pure lies. And I've seen a time that I, I get so upset I couldn't see straight. But you know, I, I felt that thing try to grab hold of me. The devil don't ever give up. How knows he'll never give up? And I felt that thing try to, you know, and I just pushed it off. I just pushed it aside. Hallelujah. You know what happened to me? I forgot about it. This first time I thought about it. And I'm just thinking about it now to tell you. It ain't bothering me at all. But it used to disturb me. 